Welcome back. In this video, we're going to wrap up our studies of circles and I'm going to introduce the power theorems. And the power theorems, all three of these theorems find their origins in similar triangles. Now, I'm not going to prove the power theorems, um, but I will kind of highlight or show uh, the triangles that we might use to prove similar triangles. And then, of course, what we've done in the past, when we had similar triangles, we knew the corresponding sides of the similar triangles were proportional. And then we could multiply out the proportion using the means and extremes product theorem. And that's essentially what we're going to have here. Um, the power theorems are the multiplied out means and extremes product theorem from the similar triangle. It's very unlikely that you'll use these theorems in proof. More so, you will use them to find lengths of chords or segments or secants or, or that kind of thing. So, but just please know that the, these theorems do find their origins in similar triangles and the corresponding sides of the similar triangles are proportional. And then when you multiply out that proportion using the means and extremes product, theorem, you get these power theorems, which are products as well. So we're going to start with the chord-chord power theorem. And the chord-chord power theorem says if two chords intersect inside a circle, then the product of the lengths of the segments of one chord is equal to the product of the segments of the other chord. So I have here a circle with two intersecting chords. The chords are M, H, and us they intersect at point t and you can see here i've kind of highlighted where the similar triangles might be so by applying our power theorem we could say that chord us cuts chord mh at t and it splits mh into sides six and two so we are going to say that mt times th is going to be equal to TU times TS. So we're splitting the chords. So MT6 times 2 will equal 3 times X or TS. So 12 equals 3X and X equals 4. So then we know TS is equal to four units long and one of our chords is eight and the other one is seven units. The second power theorem is the secant secant power theorem. And it says if two secant segments are drawn from an external point of a circle, so that's where secants are drawn from, an external point. Then the product of the length of one secant, so the whole, the entire secant, the length of one secant and its in external segment, I beg your pardon, the length of the whole secant times its external segment is equal to the product of the length of the other secant times its external segment. So essentially what you need to try and memorize is the entire times the external equals the entire times the external. So the secant secant power theorem tells us that dh times ds, right, the whole secant times the external part equals da, the whole secant, times the external part. So the entire times the external part equals the entire times the external part. So we can find, you know, the length of PA or we can find X. So DH is 12 units long. 
So 12 times 4 times ds, the whole secant, times the external part, equals the whole secant dA, or in our case, x, times 3, the external part. So 48 equals 3x, divide both sides by 3, we get x equals 16. So the whole entire length of the secant is 16, and then we discover that PA is 13. And here, too, we'll see similar triangles that we'll work with that will give us those particular power theorems. And finally is the tangent secant power theorem. And it says, if a tangent segment and secant segment are drawn from an external point to a circle, so the tangent segment is going to be drawn tangent to the circle, the secant is going to cut through the circle, then the square of the measure of the tangent segment is equal to the product of the measures of the entire secant times its external part. So the secant part of our tangent secant is exactly the same as we had previously, right? When we worked with secants, it was the entire times the external equals the entire times the external. Okay, so here we go. The entire thing, the entire secant times the external part. So my secant portion is going to be mt times mf equals, well, the tangent. I only have one length for the tangent. And if you'll notice in all of these other problems, are we multiplying two things together, right? the external part times the entire thing, or right, one part of the chord times the other part of the chord equals one part of the chord times the other part of the chord. So I've got to multiply something times something else. Well, with the tangent, I only have one tangent. That's it. It's only one length. Nothing cuts into it. So we're just going to multiply that twice. So the tangent squared, or mq times mq, which would really be mq squared. So the tangent squared equals the entire secant times its external part. I kind of flipped these, but I think you'll get the idea. So the tangent squared, we don't know mq, we don't know our tangent, so y squared equals the entire secant, 18, times its external part, 2. And we know that 18 times 2 is 36. We square root both sides, and we get y is plus or minus 6. But we're not going to have a negative length, so we can discount that. And so now we know our secant here has to be just 6 units long. So we'll do some more problems and some, believe it or not, some practical application of these, especially the tangent secant power theorem. Uh, we use that for determining distance to horizon. Um, I can tell you the chord-chord power theorem is used in accident reconstruction. Um, so in a car crash, they use the chord-chord power theorem to determine some things that help you find the speed of the car when it lost control. So we'll do some practical application of this when I see you in class.